But like, how, how do you disprove that? How are you going to disprove that? Okay, so when you say you believe in the Big Bang, explain to me what the Big Bang is. So the universe or how did it happen? From a small, from a small like, collision of particles. Okay. From like a, um, yeah, from like one point. Right. And obviously that's um, supported because the universe is constantly expanding. So obviously it had to happen in one point. Right. One origin. But so I just don't understand like so like one main campus. so when you say collision of particles where did the particles come from yeah that's true that's that's why i want to know though that's yeah. why, like how so what we what we normally use uh, the argument we normally use for this kind of scenario is like cause and effect do you know cause and effect so, so for example for every cause there's an effect yeah so say for example you wanted tea yeah, yeah. so you would actually boil some water using either fire or electric whatever Heat, uh, whatever uh, source you want to use. So, when the when the water boils, yes, yeah. that is the effect, and the cause would be the fire or the electric, yeah, yes, providing the heat energy for that. So this is what causes. So for every effect, there is a cause. So what we say is that for everything that began to exist has a cause. So we know that the universe at some point began to exist. Do you believe in that? Uh, Scenario, or, or do you believe? No, I understand that. Yeah. But like, do you believe that the universe didn't exist one at one point in time, and then it began to exist at some yeah. point? Because you believe it's, that? It's constantly expanding. Yeah, don't, exactly. Don't you think if that was reversed, there would be one point where yeah. it didn't yeah. expand? That's what they call the singularity. So oh, we, sorry. The singularity. Okay. That is basically the inception of the universe when it began. So, this is what we know. That because even if it's a singularity, it doesn't come by itself. There must be some cause to bring it into existence. It didn't just come from nowhere. Because we know that something cannot come from nothing. You see what I mean? Yeah. That would be against the principles of uh, basically uh, common sense even, you know? Yeah. Because we know, do you know that nothing doesn't even exist as a concept? Yeah. So how can we bring into existence something from nothing? So the question is, what caused that singularity? What caused that first moment of existence of the universe? So, so, your, so your opposition to that basically is just how can something happen without it happening? Without nothing. Okay. How, can, how can something happen from nothing? Okay. So there must be some cause and this cause has to be at least eternally existing because obviously otherwise you will go into the same situation as what caused that cause. You see what I mean? You'll have this infinite regress. So it, we know that we wouldn't exist if there was such a such an infinite regress. So we know we, uh, that there is no what do you say eternal chain of um, universes which always existed, and then you have one chain finish, and then another chain comes into existence, and so on of the universe. The reason for that is because anything that's infinite regress, then it doesn't stand. Uh, again, they say it's against common sense and against science as well that you cannot have an infinite regress of events. The event has to stop somewhere. Yeah. Yes? So just to give you a simple analogy, say for example, you wanted to borrow a book from a library. Yeah. And there was, imagine if there were like infinite people in front of you. Okay. Would you ever get a book? Uh, no. Well, what do you mean? Like, well, if there's an infinite amount, well, you can't, infinite, it's just, you don't have a value for infinite. Yeah, absolutely. But you, you know the concept of infinite, right? Yeah. Just like, like the concept of zero, which is nothing, Yes, you have the concept, the other opposite, which is infinite, which is without limits. So if there was people in front of you and this queue is infinite, then you will never get a book because infinity doesn't finish. You see what I mean? Yeah. It'll be, it, okay, I understand it'll be an like, unending queue. You can't really give infinite value because there's always something bigger than that value. Absolutely, yes. So, so that, that, is, that is what I mean by infinite regress. So you cannot say that what caused this cause, for example, if you say there is a cause A and B and C and D and so on, yes, we know that everything that begins to exist has a cause. Since the universe began to exist, we know that it must have a cause. And this cause is not something which began to exist by itself, that means it is eternally existing, yes? Second, that it is something which is independent and it is not uh, contingent on anything else. Uh, okay. So obviously if it, if it depends on something, so it needs to necessarily exist. Yeah. 
Yes, and this is not special pleading because in, otherwise you will never have our own existence if you have this infinite regress thing. So that's why I'm saying the buck has to stop somewhere. And that is what we say is this, if you want to call it intelligent designer, or if you want to call it um, supernatural being, if you don't want to use the term God, that's yeah. fine. As long as you believe that there is someone or something who is intelligent, ever existing. In, uh, so like how the earth, or like the universe was created, as, like, as it's so perfect, it has to be created by someone. Do you believe that? I believe that, yeah. Not only the universe, you, yourself. Take yourself as an example. But then, because why, why is there suffering? In, in, it just doesn't that seem, doesn't that sort of counteract? So, not really, because... If, if, let's say, so you know how the earth is, is a certain distance from the sun, how can an explosion do that? Only someone can do that. So we're at a certain distance from the sun. Yeah. Not too close to burn, not too far yeah. to freeze. How can how can someone do that? But then allow certain catastrophes in other countries happen? Yeah. This is what I'm asking. Yeah. That's so. You see, we believe that this life we have here is a test. So you might you might have ups and downs in your life. Okay. Yes. It's not it's not constant. Everybody has ups and downs, regardless of who you are. Yes, you must have experienced some calamity or some death in your family or I don't know, some disease or something like that. I mean, take the pandemic, for example. No one imagined this would happen and bring, bring countries into lockdown. You see what I mean? So you're saying this, but let's take it. This is part of the test. So what we believe that God exists and that intelligent designer or that uh, uh, supernatural being is God. So to put a label to it, we, the reason we say God because God is the one who has actually created us and he's the one who sustains us and he's the one who is responsible basically for everything, yes? And when I say responsible, I mean like he's the one in control of everything. So when you look at diseases and when you look at calamities, when you look at uh, uh, anything that is, uh, what do you say, that impacts us in life, yes? But then the opposite of that is also uh, available. Like for example, you there's not just unhappiness in the world there is also happiness so there are there are mothers who who desire to have uh, sorry there are uh, uh, men and women who desire to have children and god blesses them with children and they're quite happy yes uh, so there is all happiness and what do you say um, uh, unhappiness as well in this world and that's the reason we have to go through this test and god tests us for our patience for our ability to uh, how we how we actually so, wait, so do, you, do you have to learn to accept this unhappiness, is, is what you're saying? Because you know the happi there's happiness and unhappiness. So let's say have, there's an earthquake to happen. Yeah. Do you think that's, that's God, God, yeah, God like testing you? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So take the case of tsunamis, earthquakes or any other natural disasters. All this is basically a test for the people who endure it. And the peop even the people who die in it, Yes, for them also it's a test. So even though for us, it might be something really a horrible death or something really, but you see, at the end of the day, if God is the one who created us, yes? You know, the Muslims, we say that when somebody dies, we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It means to, to God we belong and to Him we ret return. So if everything that you and I experience is a test and you and I actually belong to the one who created us ultimately and how he wants to test you in this life is up to him, isn't it? Okay. You didn't understand that? Which part of it? Okay, no problem. But what, 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 I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that if you want to understand the suffering in this world, it's, you know, like, for example, if somebody told you that you will have an exam and in your, in your exam you need to pass through struggle because you have to obviously study for it. It is kind of a struggle, isn't it? Yeah. No one is going to give you an exam which is really easy for you. It's not much point of, it, of testing you, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the reason we, we go through ups and downs in our life. And then God is testing us okay. to see. So if we if we lived our life through eternal, uh, not eternal, sorry. If we lived our life perfectly, so no starvation, no. So you're saying that's just not what? Yeah, it's not much of a test, is it? The whole idea of testing you is to to basically uh, see what kind of character you have. Yes, whether how you come across 
when a calamity hits you or when some misfortune comes in your life. It might be you, it might be in your, within your family, it might be someone within your friends or something. How you go through that particular uh, experience is what brings out the true character in you. You know, whether you'll be bearing with patience. Yes, there's a hadith which says that a Muslim is someone who bears with patience the calamity. So when, it, when calamity afflicts him, then he says, Alhamdulillah, he praises God. And when something good happens to him, he also praises God. Yes, so when a calamity hits him, he, he says, he, he basically bears it with patience. Yes, and this is his way of uh, basically showing his character that even in such a situation, he does not disbelieve in the one who created him and who, who's going to be the one who's going to judge him one day. What's your view about the Day of Judgment? Do you believe in a life after that? Uh, I think I believe in once you die, it's over. I don't believe in like a paradise where you get reincarnated. I don't believe in that. Right. What if there was one? What What would you say? I just, I just don't see like, okay, so if you, if you were to go to a paradise, yeah. say, are you there forever? Are you, are you, is there going to be an end to that? No, that's that's going to be forever. What's wrong with having paradise forever? I'm not complaining. Are you? Obviously, I'm okay. I would be complaining if I was in hell forever. Obviously, that's a complaint. But you see, as, as human beings, we have been given opportunity while we live. And it's quite a long life for many of, many of us, you know, like 70, 80, 100 years. Yes, if you're fortunate. So what I'm saying is that it's not like you have been let without guidance in this world. So we believe in a, a scripture which has been given to us, which is called the Quran. I'm sure you must have heard about it. Yes, so the Quran is a holy scripture which we believe in, uh, that this was given to the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, and he, he was given this last message. And this is a message which is universal, which is for all of mankind. And in that, in that message, you'll find the guidance as to what is your duty to God and what God will give you as a reward for that if you are obedient and what the consequences of um, you, you face if there is disobedience from yourself to the Creator. So th this is something that you obviously you won't understand in one sitting so it's, it's something you need to internalize and understand. So you see all this existence, your first question was quite good actually, that where did we come from? Where is who created the universe? How did it come into existence? So from an atheistic perspective, you cannot answer these questions. Because you see, science doesn't answer about the, about, uh, the origin of things. So for example, if I ask you about the origin of the universe or the origin of a single cell, yes, which is abiogenesis, you, science won't be, um, be able to convince you about these things. But in religion, you can understand from, a the from theology that these things did not come about by themselves. There must be an intelligent designer. So if you look at a single cell, yes, it's, it's not something which is quite simple in the sense. It's got its own um, powerhouse called the mitochondria. Yes, it's got the cytoplasm. You must have studied all this. Yes, at, uh, at uh, university or school. So it's, 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 it's kind of, what do you say? Self-contained unit of life. You know, there are single cell amoeba, which is, the simplest form of life. Okay. So if, if something as simple as a single cell cannot be produced by scientists in a lab with all the technology and the knowledge and information we have, can you imagine the, the universe, yes? Where there are stars which are hundreds and millions of times bigger than our sun, yes? And, okay, the, guess, yeah. and there are hundreds and thousands of galaxies Millions, in fact, yes? Yeah. How did all this come into existence? You can't see all this came by chance. There must be a creator, there must be sustainer who actually brings all this into existence. It doesn't come by itself. Okay. So if you cannot even create a single cell, I mean, forget a single cell. If I said that uh, those shoes you're wearing, yes, just fell from the sky, would you believe it? No, you will say that something as simple as your shoes has a creator. Yes, it was obviously created by whichever company it is. Yes, so if something as simple as your shoes, which doesn't even have life, which is non-sentient, yes, yeah. has a creator, do you think something as a single life form, like a, sorry, single cell life form, like an amoeba doesn't have a creator, or something as complex as the universe doesn't have a creator? 
No one believes that it all just popped into existence one day. That would be nonsensical. So from an atheist perspective, how will you answer these questions? Like, uh, how will you understand all this uh, existence, the natural, the natural world that you see around you? Yes? The plants, the sun, the sky, yeah. the clouds, all this, you know? And there's a, there's a system in everything. Like even today it rained earlier, yes? That rain didn't just come by itself, there's a system. You know the, the what do you say, the water cycle? Yeah. Yes, all that is a system. It, does, it doesn't just happen by itself. I mean, science is able to explain to you what happens during this phenomenon, but it doesn't tell you about the origin of those. You see what I mean? So from an atheistic perspective, you won't be able to answer. And that is where Islam comes in, to fill in those gaps, the gaps of science, as they say, <laughs> uh, okay? To fill in those gaps, you have to understand that there must be something out there. There must be an intelligent designer. There must be uh, uh, someone who understands all this to bring it into existence. Just like the creator of your shoes or the manufacturer of your shoes understands your shoes very well. Yes, our creator knows us very well. And he knows exactly what you require as guidance and what you, what you should actually stay away from. So there are things in Islam you must have heard from your Muslim friends which are forbidden. Drinking alcohol, gambling, fornication, adultery, all these things are detrimental to us as human beings, you see? So what Islam has forbidden for you is basically for your own good and for the good of the society. Now, you know earlier I asked you about the, the afterlife. Yeah. Yes, you said you die and that's it, that's the end of it. So dust to dust, ashes to ashes, yes, whatever the saying goes. Let me flip that now. What if there really was a life after that and there really is God who is going to judge you one day for, for everything that you had done during your life? Then who is in a better position, yourself or the people who believe in God and who have actually prepared for the afterlife? Who's taking the bigger risk? Well, people don't believe in God. They're taking the bigger risk. But... So why would you take a risk? You know, imagine, let's flip that as well. Let's say there is no God and there is no afterlife, yes? As a person who actually believed in God and abided by his laws and commands, yes? If I become dust, yes? What have I got to lose? Nothing. Let's say if your point of view was accurate and that was a fact afterlife, that they, sorry, there's no afterlife, you, you die and that's the end of it. I as a person did not actually lose much, yes? In fact, I gained during this life term because everything that was forbidden to me was actually bad for me anyway. And everything that was good to me, uh, good for me, was actually good for me and the society as a whole. Like giving charity, helping the needy, uh, loving your neighbor, all these things are good for you as an individual. So you, you, in fact, you don't even need to be a believer in God to understand these things, which are the common good, which many of us acknowledge. So you haven't lost out, as, as, sorry, I haven't lost out much in doing so. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So the question is, why would you be taking such a huge risk where your, your life, which is going to be for eternity after you die, you're, putting, you're, you're taking such a huge gamble, such a huge risk in that. But if you believed in God and in the afterlife, then you are in a much better position than anybody else. Do you, do you understand the, yeah, I, I the argument here? Yeah, but he needs to believe in the Quran first to understand that. And that's why I was that's why I was using the approach from a logical perspective, yes, where every one of us can agree. So if you have a, a what is a neutral position as to where did the universe come from? Yes, without using any uh, what do you say, any scripture or anything at all. Then we can come to an understanding from a neutral position as to why would we deny the, what do you say, the most, uh, the thing that makes the most sense. Like something coming from nothing, that is impossible. Yes, scientifically, logically, rationally. Something coming from nothing, because nothing doesn't even exist. See what I mean? If I said you did nothing today, does that mean you did something today? No. It just means that you have not done anything. So this logical understanding is, I think, is, is, is neutral in the sense that we discuss how did all of this begin and where did it come from. If you ask questions like that, then maybe the next question will be what is the purpose of your life? 
why are we here? What is our, uh, why, why are we different from the animals? You see? Why do we have something called rationality, which we can actually use to our, uh, to make our lives better, for example? Yes? You don't see the animals dressing up every day, going to work, or animals writing books and having libraries, or animals having a civilization. Why is this unique only among the human beings and not amongst any other? We got millions of species, yes? Hundreds of thousands of species on Earth, yes? Yeah, millions. Why do all of this do not have the same unique position as us human beings? Why are we asking these questions about our existence and about our afterlife? It's because we have something which we are blessed with our rationality and our our understanding you know as conscious beings and you know if you go about looking for empirical evidence for everything you will never succeed you know why because there are things within yourself which you do not have which you believe in and i'm sure you will in a minute i'll prove that this to you yet you do not have any empirical evidence for it you know what that is yes Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. What's empirical? Yeah. So something that you can objectively prove. Yes? Okay, but like, yeah, obviously, like, once I, I see... Like, verifiable, testable, testable, and observable. So these are empirical evidences. Once I, once I see a miracle, I'm obviously going to believe in that. How do you know that miracle is not playing... That miracle is not based on something that you hallucinated, for example, you know? In fact, there's... You know, there's a, there's a verse in the Quran where Allah says that even if you see a door opening in the sky, yes, and you ascending, even then you will disbelieve. I'm not talking about you as a person, but the people who are skeptical, when they see that, they will say, this is just magic. So this is my mind playing tricks. Yes. So when you, miracles are such that there's no scientific explanation for it. You see what I mean? But you yourself are a miracle and I'll tell you why. Do you believe in consciousness? Do you believe you're conscious? You believe you're conscious? Yes? Give me an empirical evidence you're conscious. Something verifiable, testable, observable, yes? In a laboratory or any by any other devices. But you believe in it. You see what I mean? And that is the miracle, my friend. You are a miracle. When you were created unlike any other being, yes? Because you see, there, there is consciousness amongst animals as well. They are conscious, yes? That means, consciousness means to be aware of your environment, to be aware about your existence. So there is consciousness amongst the animals. But you are a special being. A human being is set apart from every other creation, as you can see, yes? So your own consciousness, which you cannot deny, and there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah says, to look within yourself and beyond the horizons. So when you look within yourself, look at your own consciousness. No scientist will deny, trust me, no scientist will deny consciousness because every question that you ask me right now, it is linked to your consciousness. The faculties, the very faculties that you use for inventions, for asking questions, for scientific postulations, yes, for, uh, for these uh, theories of evolutions, and all the other theories that you think about, they are all linked to one source within you, your consciousness. Without your consciousness? Yeah. Uh, what about animals? Don't they have a consciousness? They have consciousness. I just mentioned that. No, because yeah. you said consciousness only applies to human beings. No, I didn't say that. I said the animals have consciousness, but rationality only applies to human beings. Yeah, sure. When you rescue yeah. yeah, of course. Consciousness being, being aware of your environment, your, who you are, your own existence, and so on. So, they, if you are one of those hyper-skeptical, uh, and I'm not saying you are, persons who have to go around and look for evidence for every single thing, then ask yourself, where is the evidence that you even exist? See what I mean? You could be a, some sort of a brain in a jar, sitting in some laboratory, yes? Where the scientist is doing experiments on you, making you imagine speaker's corner yes making you imagine your friend and myself as well yes by injecting you in certain way it could be that yeah you guys seen the matrix right no 
So that's so you could be in a matrix. Yes? So anyway, look at the there are things, and I'm not saying not to believe in the reality. Of course, we that is a, one thing that differentiates us from the insane people. The insane people have no idea about the reality. Yes? So they might be having hallucination, they might be having because this is this is a mental disorder. And that's the reason they're in a mental institute, maybe. But we as people who understand our environment, our reality, you cannot deny your consciousness. So even without empirical evidence, you have already internalized and accepted this as your reality. And that is the reason, like I said, you're able to ask these questions and think and build the civilization, write a book, I don't know, anything. It's all ultimately related to your consciousness. And you are, when you compare yourself to the universe, yes, you forget the universe. In fact, sorry, compare, forget yourself. Even the earth itself, the entire globe, the entire earth is just a speck in the millions of galaxies. So you're just a speck in this universe. That is how insignificant we are. And as human beings, we think, oh, we are great. We are this mighty people, you know. There are lots of people who lived in the history. Yes, the pharaohs and the kings and the Caesars and the caliphs and so on. They all somehow thought that they were the greatest, with the greatest power. But where are they now? They're all six feet under. Yes. So that's why I'm saying, let us humble ourselves, come to a conclusion based on our, the rationality and the consciousness that God has blessed you with, that we have a reason in this life and we have, a, we have an existence for which we are not responsible. Yes, you and I did not ask God to create us as human beings. We could have been, I don't know, an ant or something. It's insignificant compared to us, see what I mean? But it's not, it's not something that we by our own choice. But God has blessed us to be human beings, give us rationality, yes, give us consciousness, to ask questions, to give us free will. You know, you're not forced. I'm not forcing you to become a Muslim or forcing anybody to become a Muslim or something like that. But this is something that you yourself has to come to a conclusion. You have to come to a conclusion on the basis of your own understanding, your rationality, your research. And then, you know, because ultimately you will recognize the truth. If you are sincere, and this is one of the most important attributes which you should have, sincerity. Because if you're not sincere, and I'm talking about you guys again, I'm talking in general. If you're, if you're insincere, even if the truth comes to you, you will not recognize it. That's just not be, being flexible. Right? Say again? That's just not being flexible. How do you mean? As in, if, you, if I have an argument saying, uh, I don't know, pretty anything, and I don't accept that your argument was correct or better than mine, yeah. that's just not being, that's just being arrogant. That's just being, no, no, I'm saying you have the choice to agree or disagree. No, if, if I'm not saying, I'm not imposing my ideas on you. I'm speaking to you, I'm sharing my opinion about my faith and about the knowledge I have about my faith with you. And I'm contrasting this with your worldview of, uh, is it agnostics, yeah? You guys agnostics, not atheists. So you, you haven't come to the conclusion yet whether God exists or not. See what I mean? Because you're still researching it. But like I said, sincerity is key in this. If you are sincere, then you'll be able to acknowledge the truth and accept it. But if you're going to keep questioning and, I don't know, being hyper-skeptical about everything, then I don't think anybody should even visit the NHS, the doctor. Because no one goes to the doctor and says, oh, doctor, I've got a pain in my neck or pain in my stomach, but before you treat me, I want to see your credentials. Do you guys do that? No, you don't. This is called testimony, because you believe in the testimony of the NHS, that they will only appoint people who are qualified. So you accept their testimony. Similarly, as Muslims, we believe in prophets and messengers who were sent by God, yes? And Allah says in the Quran that there is not a nation to which a prophet and a messenger did not come as a warner. So you have been warned about the consequences of your disbelief. And you'll be, you have been given the glad tidings as well of the belief that if you, if you obey and believe and submit to the one true God, then you will have the reward for that. So similarly, we believe in the testimony of the prophets and messengers. And again, you, 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 you look at the, uh, the, you read the Quran. I don't know if you had the opportunity to read the Quran. Yourself? No? Would you be willing to take a Quran, a copy of the Quran, if, uh, if we give it to you as a gift? Free of charge.
yeah. and, and to read it. Yeah. Is it okay if you ask, brother? I think Ali or someone who has a copy of the Quran. Inshallah. He just went. I just, yeah. Yeah, just went. Oh, is it? There must be another brother who. Might, or maybe ask Lamin. He might have. Brother Lamin. Brother Lamin over there. Lamin. Yeah. The guy in the. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's always good to keep an open mind, to do your own research, to, and to ask questions. Asking questions is a good thing because you learn. See what I mean? Yeah. You didn't say much. You have any questions? From what we discussed. Yeah, inshallah. I mean, that's that's a good thing, you know. Yeah, that's fine. So, inshallah. I mean, if, if you guys come back, brother, can you arrange? You're a Muslim, yeah? Are you a Muslim? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. See, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> good. Maybe you can arrange a Quran for the brothers. A Quran, a copy of the Quran. Yes. But if you're here next time, maybe I'll inshallah I'll try to get one for you. Yeah. Because it's always good to keep an open mind, to learn, to ask questions. Yes. Because we, like I said, one day our life will come to an end, you know. Yeah. And we don't know what's going to happen to us tomorrow, let alone today. We can't yes? say we never heard of Sorry, let alone, uh, we, we don't know what's going to happen today, let alone tomorrow. Never say you never heard. Yeah. So, what I suggest you do is ask questions to your friend or other Muslims who, who, who basically can direct you in the right direction. Yes? And inshallah, you'll learn slowly, gradually. Because, like I said, Islam in Islam, we don't believe in compuls compulsions. So we cannot compel you to believe something unless you do it by your own heart. So even if I put a sword on your neck, you will be actually fearing the sword rather than telling me from your heart as to why you believe it. So I cannot do that. That is against or prohibited in Islam to force someone at gunpoint or by sword to make, compel someone to accept Islam. This is forbidden. So people say that Islam was spread by the sword. That's completely wrong. Yes, so if you look at history, for example, today, the largest population of Muslims is in Indonesia and Malaysia. These countries, you know, have really large population of Muslims. Which Muslim army marched there? None. So anyway, inshallah, it comes from conviction. Okay, so you, you, you learn, you study, and then you make up your mind. And inshallah, we pray for you and for everyone, inshallah, that Allah gives you hidayah, means guidance from God Almighty, to recognize the truth when it comes to you and to acknowledge and accept it, inshallah. All right? What's your name? Uh, Omar. Omar? Oh, mashallah, you already have a Muslim name. <laughs> That's a yourself? Yeah. Paul. What's your background? Paul. Nice mission. Sorry? Your background? Oh, I'm Italian. Sorry. Italian? Yeah. Do Italians have Omar? Is it in Sicily or something? Uh, no. My mom just liked the name. There's no really. Mashallah, anyway, it's a good name. Already halfway there. <laughs> Alright, thanks a lot, guys. Inshallah. Take care. On. Yeah, sure. off camera. Yeah, no problem. Inshallah. All right, brothers. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please make dua for them and for the ummah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khairan.